So most of our work at Climate Outreach has to do with language, how to, how to use different frames, different words to try and communicate climate change more effectively, um, try and widen out the level of interest in climate change. So we talk a lot about stories and about narratives, but actually words are only, only part of stories and the other, the other part of it is images. And although there's a lot of research that's been done on how to um, verbally communicate climate change, written communication, there's much, much less on the visual medium, which is kind of crazy because this is a decision, what, what image should I use? How do I illustrate my story, my campaign? That's a decision that people take every day all around the world. So it makes sense that you'd want to have some kind of evidence base for that. Um, so that's why I'm here at COP22. It's the first time I've been to a COP, even though they've been running for 22 years. Um, and we're bringing a project called Climate Visuals to COP. And Climate Visuals is a research program that has um, been conducted in three countries. So Germany, UK and the US. And we spoke to people about how they responded to different types of climate images. Um, and using that evidence base, we've come to COP to try and apply that to the challenges that people face communicating around this event that happens once a year. It's one of the few times um, that you can be fairly confident that the world, to some extent, is paying attention on climate change. We're, we're telling a story, um, but, but what images are we using to tell that story? How are people responding to those images? Um, and do we have a bit of a, of a limited visual vocabulary on climate change? So as part of, of bringing the Climate Visuals project to COP22, we had a look at the, the sort of dominant images that were being used and, and promoted around COP21. And as you might expect, you see lots of, of images of politicians and negotiators inside the conference. You see lots of images of organized staged demonstrations and protests outside of the conference. But maybe what's a bit more surprising is you, you don't really see anything else. So there's, there's really a, quite a restricted range of images that seem to be getting taken up and getting mainstream attention um, around the COPs, or at least around COP21. And that's potentially problematic because one of the, one of the key findings that we, we um, found in the climate visuals research was that people don't really respond very well to overly staged images around climate change. So photo opportunities of politicians smiling and waving, or even protesters dressed up, maybe with slogans people don't understand. People didn't identify very easily um, with what they saw as typical environmentalists. Um, and they, they didn't feel that, that both posed politicians and posed demonstrations and protests were very authentic or credible. It didn't feel like they were good spokespeople for climate change. They didn't seem to, to tell very ordinary, everyday stories. They didn't seem like um, real people doing real things. Um, so there's an argument, I think, that although that kind of literal documentation of a COP is necessary, that we need to do more than that and to sort of tell more everyday human stories, people being impacted by or, or responding to climate change that come from different communities around the world and get us a bit further than people dressed up as polar bears and penguins. <laughs>